Okay. Start off. And let me admit, and then let me also just um, live on Facebook also and get that started. Uh, okay. Um, Lisa. Okay. And then we'll go live on Facebook and then it's preparing to stream. Got it. It's still setting up. And then, okay, so we're live and people can put comments on or whatever on live. But in the meantime, so now, now that we're live streaming on Facebook and we're on Zoom and we're all here. Um, so, you know, like somehow you and I have known each other on, you know, for maybe 10 or 12 years. Um, but I'm thinking that some of the people, it was supposed to be like, you know, touching base with Lisa Parisi, but there's people here um, who may be watching who don't know who you are. So uh, can you just, you want to give a, just a quick overview of, you know, teaching and professional development and what you're doing now? Okay. Well, um, I am a teacher. I'm retired now. Um, I retired right before everything shut down. I retired in 2019. And um, I am an, an award-winning teacher. I've written a book with Brian Crosby on blogging in the classroom. And um, I, speak, I've, I speak at conferences about universal design for learning, about project-based learning. I, all the awards that I've won are about project-based learning awards. Um, except for my global, I was, I was a finalist for the Global Teacher Prize from the Varkey Foundation. Um, and that was just based on everything I did in the classroom because I was very, it was very important for me to make the classroom global. And, um, and now I am working for Western Carolina University. I'm in North Carolina. And I was working for, I'm working for West Carolina University as a field supervisor, and I'm supervising student teachers. Wow, who are going into the field. So let's see. So I guess you said you, you retired in 2019, and have, have you been in North Carolina since then? Yes, I retired and moved here from Long Island, New York, and um, and you know, and I just started working. This is only my second semester working for Western Carolina. Um, it's very different than what I'm used to in New York. Um, it's an interesting way that they do student teaching, but I really enjoy getting my hands in the game and working with these young people, trying to get into the field and um, seeing how I can help them and having fun working with them on things that took me years to learn. Mm. Things like learning about universal design for learning and learning about um, responsive classroom ideas and how to get a, build a community of empathetic learners. So I guess, first of all, how did you go about getting this position? I mean, did they seek you out? Did you apply for it? Did you see, you know, how, how did you get it? I applied for it. I actually, um, I got into pickleball, so I'm, I play pickleball. And <laughs> I, think that, I think that's a requirement for retirees, I'm not sure. And um, one of the people that I play with used to work for Western Carolina University. And we just started talking and I said, I'd love to get involved. And he connected me to my supervisor who hired me over the phone. Um, mm -hmm. We had a phone interview and, um, and she hired me and I've been doing it ever since. And and then, um, so you mentioned that teaching is a little, is teaching a little bit different or in North Carolina that is in New York or is it that um, the way teachers are prepared is different? When you said- Yes that? and yes. Ah, okay, no. <laughs> two for two. Yes, um, the preparation is very different. In, in New York, you do two 
um, two placements in student teaching. One, in, it, as certainly as an elementary teacher, one as a lower grade and one as an upper grade placement. In, in North Carolina, or at least with WCU, your placement is the same for both. It's with the same teacher in the same class. So I started with interns. They're, they're like intern ones and intern twos. And intern ones, they're re really only in the class two days a week. It's mm -hmm. more like what we call participation in New York. And, um, and they're with a specific teacher in a specific grade. And then when they go to intern two the following semester, where they're full time, they're in the same classroom with the same teacher. Mm -hmm. Which has its benefits, right? I would think. So. I would think it both benefits and um, and obstacles as well, right? Right. Um, it definitely is beneficial. They have a very good relationship with their um, with their cooperating teacher and um, really learn how the teacher sets up the classroom. My concern is they're only learning from one teacher, right? Right. But they're they, learning they from have, you also, right? They have the opportunity at the last week of their second semester to go into other classrooms. Mm -hmm. But that's really only an observation right. and it's really very quick. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I wish they had different experiences, but I'm now working with the, an intern for the second time this semester. Mm -hmm. And so I see that her relationship with her classroom teacher is very, very strong. Mm -hmm. And I think that's beneficial. Um, and so, so we keep hearing how so many teachers are uh, retiring, uh, who've <laughs> been in the field for a long time. And we hear about teacher shortages. What, you know, and, and you're working with pre-service teachers. So these, these are the ones who are going to be fulfilling those shortages. Um, you know, how, I mean, they must hear about all these horror stories about how, um, you know, that you see in the press about, you know, how teachers are burning out and everything. What's, what's your take on, you know, why are they continuing to be, to become teachers? I'm, you know, I'm really happy that they are. I think, um, I think what I see from the teachers I'm working with is this is their life. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that's how, like, I, I never wanted to do anything else but teach. That was it for me. And I see that in them. Um, one of the things you had said earlier was, is, is the teaching different here? Mm -hmm. What I see in North Carolina on Long Island, in the district that I worked, and in most districts on Long Island, teachers are, first of all, the pay is much higher. In Long Island. On Long Island, yes. Mm -hmm. And, and they are given a, a certain respect that I do not see here in North Carolina. Hmm. So the teachers that I'm working with, for example, they have lunch with the students. They lose preps a lot because um, not be a teacher or something's going on. They have to do their professional development on their own time for no extra pay. If they get um, like like they can go for a master's, but they're not going to necessarily get paid for it. Mm -hmm. um, so extra education isn't necessarily helpful or I shouldn't say it's not helpful because extra right. education is always, always helpful. Awful. It's not monetarily but, mm -hmm. helpful to them. Um, and they all work other jobs. They, they don't make enough money. And and that's huge, a huge difference. I mean, to have to work a second job because you're not making enough money makes no sense at all. And so it seems so, to me then that teachers might teach for a year or two and they may go into it with the idea that this is my calling, but do you see them getting burned out or does the um, excitement about, hey, I'm making a difference with kids, does that, is that so strong that they persist? I haven't been doing it long enough to know. So I hope, hope, hope that they keep doing it mm -hmm. on the one hand. 
On the other hand, I feel I'm part of um, an organization on Facebook of North Carolina Teachers United. North mm -hmm. Carolina has no unions. Uh -huh. I'm a big union person. I was you know, a union VP in uh, Long Island and, you know, in my district with the elementary schools. And, and I, I feel like we got what we did because of the unions. That Which we is fought. one of the reasons why people in power are bashing unions is that they, of course, right. Of course we got, we got, we pushed hard for everything that we got. Mm -hmm. We deserved everything we got, but we pushed really hard for it. Um, and the teachers, what I see on Facebook, the teachers saying is they're done. You know, they'll, there's someone who'll come on and say, is my principal allowed to tell me I can't take off? One person posted the other day that she was just, she just got an email from the principal saying, You're co if you get COVID, you can only take two days off. Um, other teachers are saying that there's this new letters um, training in North Carolina where they a way to teach reading and they're insisting all the teachers go through the training but the districts aren't providing time to do that training and so all the teachers are being told they have to do it outside of mm -hmm. school hours on their own time their own um, some of them even have yeah. to pay for the training themselves and they're saying like is this allowed is this allowed and I feel like we're at a turning point here I, right. I, I think, I mean, they talk about strike and I, I, I'm not, a, I don't believe in strike. No, I'm looking well, at it's the not that I don't believe yeah. in it, but, but something has to give. Right. I'm and, looking at comments um, from uh, Bron, who's uh, Bron Stuckey, who's coming from Australia. Um, and, you know, she's saying, she's mentioning, you know, continuity can be very, is, is very important. And that the disparity in conditions across the U.S. is alarming. You know, North, uh, Long Island or New York and North Carolina aren't that far apart geographically, especially considering Australia is even farther apart, right? Uh, but it seems worlds apart in teacher conditions. And they are. They are. And hi, Bronwyn. How are you? <laughs> so glad you're here. Um, yeah, the, um, there is a, a huge disparity between mm -hmm. Long Island and North Carolina. Um, huge. I mean, and we fought for things on Long Island. I mean, my last year there, we 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 worked under um, an expired contract and the admin, the board wanted us to take a pay cut. And we're like, we're not taking a pay cut. Are you right. out of your mind? Like, that's not going to happen. So let's mm -hmm. figure something else out. Um, but there, there's so, you know, and I look at what's going on in Florida today, you know, the, and, and Texas, where the teachers have to take their libraries and, and, and go through the thousands of books that are in their library. I know as an elementary teacher, I had thousands of books. Most of them I bought myself. Right. I had thousands of books in my library, and they have to go through and get every single one approved before it can be in their classroom. So there are teachers with no libraries, no books in their classroom because they have to do something like that. Like we we seem to be losing trust in any way mm -hmm. in teachers. We're losing trust in teachers. And um, I, I, you know, like I, the solution I think would be for all the teachers to just leave the classroom. But I don't want that to happen because mm -hmm. I care so much about the kids and I know, you know, and I care about the teachers and I don't know what the solution, you know, I don't know another solution to that short of people go out and vote and and vote in the midterms for these for the smaller positions for the local positions and mm -hmm. local school board boards and find out who is uh, vote, uh, is running for school board, who trusts teachers, because that's what you yeah. want. You do want you, people to trust teachers. Do you get a chance to look at the what's going on in the classroom also? <laughs> I, mean, I go into, that's what I do. I'm a okay. field supervisor, so I go into the classroom. And so what do you find, are there differences in the teaching in the classroom? The interesting thing is I'm not finding 
that huge of a difference. I think the materials could be better. Yeah. Like okay. all my teachers have broken smart boards. I'm like, well, what is that? Like fix the, fix the equipment. Um, I, I think the materials are different. I think the, t like one of the things that, that has been driving me crazy and I know it's coming from the administration or mm -hmm. the, or North Carolina, I'm not sure which is timing. Like the first lesson that I observed last year on my very first run out, I got stuck behind a tractor on the mountain. This is North Carolina. I got, I was one minute late, one minute. And the lesson had already started. I, when I had student teachers in my classroom, I would never start the lesson until the supervisor was in the room. If the, if the student teacher was being observed, mm -hmm. but I went to observe and I was one minute late literally and i yep. had already missed the intro to the lesson mm -hmm. because they are on a time schedule like you wouldn't believe and mm -hmm. they have to adhere to those schedules well wow. yeah it's as you're talking and i'm looking you know uh bron again says you know trust is at the heart of a healthy system and mm -hmm. ron was part of this group and tammy uh who's also here uh was part of this group and we we were in finland uh, the week before last, and I mean, and the trust was so high, like you, you'd ask a principal, like, you know, should teach, you know, our teacher is doing this in the, in the classroom, and the principal would say, well, you know, I'm not really sure because it's really up to the teachers to figure out what they should be doing, and I shouldn't be involved with that, you know, in those details. And here, as you're saying, they're on a strict schedule; they have to start in you know, this, this minute, they have to, five minutes in, they have to be here. Um, use these materials, use, you know, do it, train this way. And yeah, yeah it's, it's incredibly dis, disparaging mm -hmm. <laughs> to be in a classroom and not be trusted. Yep. So, or what you went to school for. Right. And and it's the parents who didn't go to school for this who are coming in and saying, we know better. Right. Uh huh. And you, when you walk into the classroom, like, uh, so the other thing is I, um, I've been speaking at, at conferences and one of my big topics is to, you know, is joy and playing and playfulness in the, in the classroom. Did you see joy in the classroom? You know, um, I'm just thinking of one of the, the the Finnish teachers who said, well, you know, because they don't do assessments in, in Finland. So it's like, well, if you're not doing assessments, how do you know you're doing a job? How do you know the, the, the students are learning? And, and the answer was, you know, at the end of the day, if I look at my students and their eyes are smiling, I know I'm doing a great job and I know that they're learning. So do you see that type of joy in the classrooms? I see happy children. I do. I think the teachers do a really good job of of helping their children to be happy in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. But I see things like, like second graders sitting in their, in their, at their desk all day. Right. Or fourth graders sitting, you know, they walk in in the morning and they're not even allowed to talk to their classmates they have to come in put their homework in the basket sit down start their morning work and and then when they when they get to talk in groups and I'm certainly encouraging you know there's a lot of turn and talk and you know they they do all the right things and and I encourage my interns to you know do projects and have the children work together and, and there is some there is a lot of that but it's it's all incredibly structured mm -hmm. and incredibly controlled so there's no you know I, like i remember some of my best lessons I, you know i did a i did a, a talk once um at a isti conference called controlled chaos mm -hmm. i always felt like that was what my classroom was you know, yeah, I had some control, but it was pretty chaotic. Mm -hmm. um, the kids kind of took over. And those were my best great. lessons. Yeah. My best yeah. lessons were when the kids just took over and I was like, okay, I'm out of this. Let me know when you need me. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't think that I don't I don't think that would be accepted so much, encouraged mm -hmm. or encouraged so much. Um, because how do you adhere to a schedule so tightly? And how do you follow the curriculum so strictly if you allow the children to control things more? Right, right. Right, the onus is on covering the material, not so much on the students learning and being engaged in learning, right? Right. At least from the system standpoint, the teachers try to do what they can, you know. And they do, right. and they do. And it's, I really, I'm very impressed with the teachers whose classrooms I've been in. Mm -hmm. I'm very impressed with them. Um, they work hard to, to make it, make the lessons engaging and the activities engaging, but they're using what they've been told to use. Right. So. Because they have to, they have to. Because they have to. Right. Right. Um, so where do you, well, and you mentioned UDL and, and bringing, you know, bringing the, um, you know, universal design for learning and, and bringing the interns or the, uh, the student teachers up on UDL. How do you do that? How do you bring a student, uh, a, a student teacher up on in using UDL in, in his or her classroom experience? Well, I talk about it a lot. I've sent them all to cast.org, mm -hmm. which is a great site. Um, and it's, it gets included in their lesson plans. Oh, so they so, run their lesson plans by you too, right? Yes. Um, so there, and North Carolina actually has a UDL initiative. Huh? So they're expecting teachers to do it. They're just not training teachers in what it is. Mm -hmm. So they might think, I know a, a lot of like my interns at the beginning, they would say, okay, so what I'm doing for differentiation and UDL is I'm giving them choice of pencils. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, that's a start. Right, right. Uh, um, kind of. <laughs> I did, I did have a... a uh, an intern who was doing a lesson and there were children who were advocating for their learning. They were saying, can I come closer? I can't see. Can I sit on the floor? Or she called them all over to the carpet and some of them didn't want to sit on the carpet. They wanted to sit on their chair and they asked if it was okay. And she very hesitantly said yes. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said to her afterwards, that's UDL. UDL is when you say to them, I'm going to read you a book, get yourself comfortable where you need to be, or I'm going to show you this, put yourself wherever you need to be so you mm -hmm. can see this more clearly. Um, and so I'm just trying to point out to them ways that they can incorporate more UDL yeah. that, you know, uh, there were, they do, they do certain things like, I have a child who um, needs a graphic organizer, so I'll copy the graphic organizer for him. And they put mm -hmm. that in the lesson plan. And I write in my little comments, give it to everybody. Make it available for mm -hmm. everybody. If they want it, they have it. If they don't want it, they won't use it. But don't just give it to one child because now you've just pointed out to the class, this child is different from everybody else yeah. and mm -hmm. needs something different give it to everybody. And so I just keep, hmm. I just keep talking and keep pushing and keep sharing articles and websites and ideas and um, even blogs that I've written about. I, you know, I wrote a blog a long time ago about a day in the life of a UDL classroom. And, and I shared that very recently with one of my interns and said, this is what it looks like. Children take over but there's a lot that goes on before the children right. take over that you have to set up at the beginning. Yep. Um, I was just talking today, I was observing one of my student teachers and, and she was asking questions and one of the students answered a question and then my student teacher repeated the answer. And then she asked, she asked another question and the same student answered the question and my student teacher said to her, um, 
said to another child who was talking, okay, we need to respect everybody and let's listen to our friends. I'm talking about that. I said, they might not be friends. So maybe that's why he's not talking, why he's talking. But um, I said, instead of telling the children, not all, no, not only should you tell the children to listen to each other, you need to tell her that she needs to talk loud enough for everyone to hear, that it's her responsibility to make sure everyone hears what she mm. has to say. Right. It's not your right. responsibility to repeat it so everyone can hear it. Yep. It's little things like that, that, mm. that teachers don't understand. No, and you can only really get that understanding by doing it and by being coached, which is why you're there. Right. And so, you know, and that's kind of leads into Bron had had another really interesting question. Is there any emphasis on well-being? Well, and you know, so, I mean, well-being is interesting. Well-being of the teachers and then there's well-being of the students. Is 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 that being brought up? Is it being raised, emphasized? So I'm going to tell you, Ron, this is very interesting. In the evaluation form I have to fill out for observed lessons, there is a section on, um, on sort of the well-being of the child. That are we thinking about the, you know, the 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 individual children and their learning and in, encouraging them and encouraging them to be critical thinkers and mm -hmm. all that stuff, but but it's not talked about in the classroom much and it's not really thought about in the classroom I mean I was like I said I was in a classroom recently there's a, a special needs child in the classroom who comes and goes frequently and sometimes has someone else in the classroom to help this child mm -hmm. the child separates himself from the rest of the class and every time I've been in there, he has separated himself from the rest of the class. So everyone's working in little groups and he takes his work and he goes off to the side and it's accepted. And I've asked every time, why is he all by himself? Well, because he gets frustrated because he's more comfortable over there. Um, I was told he doesn't like sitting in his seat. Okay, then how about the whole group sits on the floor with him? Like if he doesn't want, if he's not comfortable in his seat, he has, you know, problems sitting like mm -hmm. that. Okay, get the whole group sitting on the floor with him. Mm -hmm. There you go. Instead, it's allowed for him to be isolated. Hmm. I'm working, I'm working with my student teacher on that, but it's right. not really her responsibility. It's right. the classroom teacher's responsibility. So I would love, I would love for the, I mean, I mentioned it in front of the classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. I would love for the classroom teacher to hear that, but um, those are the kinds of things that happen. Mm -hmm. I've seen it in a number of, you know, in different elementary schools that, that children are allowed to be isolated. Mm. And, and I, I, I was in a classroom a, last week, I think it was, and an emergency happened during recess. There was a medical emergency with one of the students. I was observing this poor student teacher's lesson right after lunch, and there was a medical emergency, and then she was teaching, and all the kids wanted to know was what was going on with the medical emergency. And we had to like close the shades because an ambulance had come. We had to close the door because there were EMTs in the hall. I mean, it was like a really big thing. Not once, the teacher left the room and the student teacher not once acknowledged what was happening to the students. And they all knew something was happening. Right. They were at lunch. These were, you know, fourth graders. They know what's going on. When the teacher came back, I said to her, they really want to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, I understand that. And then didn't. Wow. We sat there for, for an hour. I sat with the student teacher talking about her lesson and we were watching the classroom teacher. Not once did the classroom teacher that while I was there sit down and say, okay, let's talk about what happened. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, that in my classroom, that would have been like the topic of discussion as soon right. as we and you, can, you can build your whole lessons based on what's happening. Right. Right. Because like, that's what they're interested in. Right. 
Hmm. Um, so things like that. I'm sorry, Bron. I would love to tell you, yeah. you know, it's dealt with, but I don't know that that it's a concern. So, um, just I, what are your hopes with these students? That's probably a good place to close. So you're 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 taking these new students, and what 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 would you love to happen with them? I would love for them to really study and incorporate universal design in their classrooms. I would love for them to understand that their responsibility is to their students more than the curriculum. Um, I would love for them, the big, my, a big hope for me that I do not see with administration or teachers in the area is, that they understand that it's not the child's fault if they have behavior issues or academic issues. You can't say they're failing because that's who they are. That as a teacher, it is your responsibility to teach every child and to reach every child. It is your responsibility to reach them where they are, not to wait until they catch up to you. That's my hope. Okay. I hope that they hear that. I hope that they understand that. Well, my guess is you working individually with these student teachers, they're going to get that. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, it was great catching up with you. Thank you. It's really fascinating to hear, um, you know, get different perspectives from different areas of the country and and of course, it was really cool being in Finland and getting the perspective from Finland also. And, um, you know, we'll, uh, you know, maybe we'll do another one in six months or a year. And and and, 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 it, and it'll turn out that things are very different in North Carolina than they are now. And maybe you'll see some of the teachers that you, uh, that, that you know, these uh, kids now, you know, they'll start their classes and uh, and showing some fantastic results. That's, that's my guess is what's going to happen. Well, I hope so. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me. And um, I love catching up. Okay. All right. Take care. Have a good evening. Uh, okay, bye. bye.